Hi guys, welcome back to Snakes and Adders Reptile Advice. So today I want to talk about uh, an issue that's facing the hobby that common or garden lay people wouldn't even know was an issue. And it's the issue facing DWA keepers, dangerous wild animals. Um, there are a fair few reptiles that are listed uh, on the schedule for DWA, which would include venomous snakes, crocodilians, two species of lizards. Um, and there is an issue that's ongoing that actually threatens um, DWA to its core, really. Uh, and it's on a technicality, which is really, really odd. Um, the, the problem is often DWA keepers are maligned uh, by certainly the general public. Why on earth would you want to keep a king cobra or would you want to keep whatever else? Uh, you know, I know from speaking to uh, DWA keepers, and I'm not a DWA keeper myself, never been a DWA keeper, never had any interest in being a DWA keeper. They are some of the most committed, knowledgeable, experienced keepers that you could ever hope to meet that can offer general reptile keepers a huge amount of advice, information, backup and support. They're a pretty close-knit community. They all know each other. They know who keeps what. Uh, and, you know, the advice is shared freely. Uh, which is something that the rest of the hobby at large could probably benefit from. The issue that befalls legitimate DWA keepers, and I do say legitimate because there are some underground keepers that aren't licensed and aren't doing it properly, is that to be able to have a DWA uh, license with your local authority, you need to have insurance. And this insurance covers the public, should anybody be hurt, maimed, envenomated, killed in any way, that you, the, there's an indemnity that, that will pay out if in that situation. I'll get to that in a moment. Traditionally, there's two insurers that would carry the policies. There was Brooks Braithwaite, which was Exotics Direct and Cliverton. And uh, I believe last year, they decided that they weren't taking on any new policies, uh, but were gonna honor existing policyholders. And strangely, they've both decided to upgrade this stance to it will not be renewed. Now, DWA, because it's local authority, generally runs, same as a pet shop license from Jan 1st to December 31st. So this is going to be coming to a head pretty shortly, come January 2023. Um, in the absence of insurance, the animals can't be kept. If the animals can't be kept, they need to go somewhere. But where do they go? Every other legitimate DWA keeper is in the same position. And then you think, well, zoological institutions, but they're full. Then there's also the biohazard risk, transmission of pathogens, animals coming from outside sources, etc. Which would make them very nervy about taking such animals on. And... When we sit and really think about it, the truth is these animals are facing euthanasia, mass euthanasia, because there's nowhere for them to go. As far as the quality of the animal welfare state in England goes, if this comes to pass, we've failed miserably. I've spoke to a few keepers. The messages have been heartfelt and um, really upsetting from an animal lover's perspective to think you know i mean bearing in mind as well just to segue slightly this isn't just reptiles this is big cats medium cats even an f1 savannas dwa there's plenty of exotic mammals that would fall under the purview of this or the big birds as well so they're all they're, they're all potentially facing euthanasia which is just Mind-boggling, hard to get your head round. It really is that this is the position we're in. And it's a technicality that insurance can't be provided. It, honestly, it's, 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 um, it's even hard to comprehend that it's happening. It's re really odd, really, really strange. Um, the two insurance companies have decided not to renew. 
There are no insurance companies, I don't think, that are taking it on. I think the UWA keepers are drawing a blank here, there and everywhere. Uh, I heard mentioned that a single leopard cat, the insurance was £1,200 uh, for the year, which is just an incredibly large amount of money. Um, when you can get insurance to ride a horse, which is responsible for far more deaths than DWA, uh, for probably 50 quid. So, it's re it mind boggles. Trying to work out what the reason for the, the the stopping it is. It's got to be outside pressure. It makes no sense. When you actually look at the insurance properly, it's a farce. If an animal escaped, envenomated someone, or maimed someone in the case of a big cat, or even killed them, the insurance wouldn't pay out because you failed as a keeper. Tanks have got to be escape proof. It's explicit in the insurance language that only the insured party can handle or work with the animal in any way. So by virtue of them escaping uh, from special, in the case of reptiles, specialist rooms that are secure, that you, there's, you know, you can see into the room before you enter, locked, tanks are double locked, all the rest of it. If an animal is to escape and envenomate somebody, you fail. Therefore, that's a breach of the contract of the insurance and they wouldn't pay out anyway. So, from an insurer's perspective, this is win-win. This is money for nothing, effectively. They can get out of it on a technicality and they keep collecting their premiums, which could be three to six hundred pounds per year over the two or three hundred premiums that have been taken out for privately held DWA, if not more, potentially more. I'm looking at it from the prism just of reptiles. There could well be a whole bunch more. Um, and I mean, in that case, I'm probably not the best person to comment on how many licenses there are. But either way, the insurance money is being collected without ever really having to be paid out. So it is money for nothing. Yet the insurers have decided in tandem that just so happen to be the two insurers that carry DWA not to do DWA anymore. It's a really weird conundrum, and it's it's hard to know where where they're going to go. I really feel for the keepers; it's horrific, and obviously they, there's going to have to be appeals and whatever else. But the risk is, the appeals process, or even taking it to high court. You know, there's probably some wealthy big cat keepers, big bird keepers down south that are going to want to fight this and, and challenge the legality of it. But that's going to take time. Come January first when the premium is supposed to renew, there's now going to be a bunch of DWA animals that are uninsured. Where do they go? What do they do? And obviously, you feel for people that, like me, if I've, I've raised an animal from this to, like my false water cobras, the, the younger pair, I hatch them, I've raised them, they're now six feet, they're producing eggs of their own. Um, I am... Um, absolutely sort of devoted to them i love them i think they're brilliant they're sort of part of the shop's infrastructure the, the girls love them we love working with them they're such fantastic personalities that same relationship not necessarily the handling and whatever else but working with nurturing watching something grow and being invested in this animal's life um and adoring everything about them whether it's a gaboon viper to a king cobra to a rattlesnake it makes no difference to then, on a technicality, be told, because there's nowhere for your animal to go, we're going to put it down. We're going to euthanise the animal. And you've got to stand and watch that happen. It's horrific. Absolutely horrific. So callous. Um, and on a technicality as well. See, this isn't a video where I necessarily have an answer. Or can really offer advice. It's not really reptile advice. It's more, this is happening. And it shouldn't be. What we do about it, God only knows. I don't suppose it's going to be the top of the tree of importance with everything that's going on in the world at the moment. But they've still got to make their case and try and argue it as best they can. It's just it's hard to know where they're going to go. And the fact that the insurance is a technicality, is a farce, doesn't pay out. Even if you know an animal did escape and envenomate somebody. And they'd be hung out to dry as an owner, which, by the way, has never happened. There's never been a member of the public killed by a DWA reptile. 
that hasn't. Yes, keepers have been bitten and succumbed, but the keeper's the keeper, the public's the public. That's the difference. And the insurance is for the public. It's public liability insurance. So, in that case, what's the need for the insurance? What does it do? You know, if they're not going to pay out, you know, maybe an act of God, a tree falling on a reptile house and then a load of stuff being released that way, potentially, it would pay out in that case. But to my knowledge, that's never happened. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a quandary, real quandary. And uh, I really feel for them. And I know that they're worried about it, well, as, as you would be. I mean, the same as the shops and cacking it because of the lack of a cap on business electric at the, at the moment. We all seem to be facing our own battles. And I really feel for the DWA community, the ones that are legit. Obviously, the counterpoint to this is it goes underground. The problem is you're punishing the people that have traditionally done it correctly. So the local authority know of the existence of these collections and which address they're at. So if the animals go, well, where have the animals gone? You've got to keep a record of where they're going. Um, if they just disappear, that raises question marks. Um, the zoos more than likely are not going to take them all. If they do take stuff, it's going to be minimal. It's not going to be uh, the full thing. I made a suggestion about uh, potentially an AAL, but then the LA might be funny about you trying to set that up from home. Um, and then also a zoo license, but I was told that in this particular case, the zoo license was too too expensive, prohibitively expensive, uh, for just a single small collection of reptiles. So it's a real shame, a real real shame, um, and there doesn't seem to be an easy answer to it. Um, and I really really hope, uh, passionately, that this gets resolved. I don't know how they're going to do it. But you imagine your non-DWA collection that you've put together. It's taken you 20 years. You've been keeping 20, 30 years. You're devoted to them. You've probably heavily modified your house to be able to even have your collection. To be told, we've got to put them down. We've got to come in and put them down. No ifs, buts. If you can't find a home that has a DWA, you can't find a zoological institution to take them in. We're going to put them down. How would you feel? I know how I'd feel. I'd be heartbroken. I'd be bereft. Um, so I really hope they resolve it. Sending them all my best wishes. All the DWA keepers across the UK. Wish you the very best and I hope it gets resolved. And if you've got experience of this or you are a DWA keeper, please feel free to comment, fill us in on the struggles maybe that you're having and uh, see if collectively we can think of something to try and help. I'm out of ideas, I haven't got a clue, so I'll open it up to the floor. Cheers guys.